Okay, so art. Our ability and urge to create art is one of the activities that really defines us as humans. There's a remarkable similarity of subjects and styles across cultures and across the entire time span of humanity. There's a huge range of forms and styles from naturalistic to symbolic and from representational to abstract. So I have a particular interest in geometric art, which is generally thought to be abstract and symbolic. Geometric motifs that are virtually identical are seen in art generated from the Paleolithic to modern times and across all media, from painting to pottery, and tattoos, and I'll show you some of all of those. Spirals are about my favorite geometric motif. So these were carved into a huge 5,200-year-old curbstone at the base of the Newgrange Passage Tomb in Ireland. And here's some more drawings of curbstones at the site. As well as spirals, there's a whole catalog of other geometric forms on the stone at the lower right. So here are some spirals on pottery from Egypt, Arizona, and Old Europe from 6,000 years ago. Next are going to be some examples of double spirals that are remarkably similar to one another on Minoan and Etruscan pottery, another curbstone, and a 6,000-year-old decorative figurine from Old Europe that kind of reminds me of tattoos. And these are some cool spiral tattoos from different cultures showing really remarkable similarities down to the jaggedy thingies that are coming off the spirals. These same jaggedy spirals can be seen on Minoan poetry from, po pottery from 1800 BC, and there's a bunch more examples of these jaggedy spirals. So another typical occurrence in uh, geometric art is the association of different motifs, often as animal figures. Snakes and spirals are, are recurrent double motifs. So the top in image is uh, the front and back of an 18,000-year-old belt clasp, and the bottom image is a huge earthwork in my wife's home state. The paleoanthropologist David Lewis Williams has developed hypotheses for how simple geometric motifs become incorporated into figures of fanciful animals with exaggerated features, <laughs> like, like these monkey tattoos and these spirals here, and uh, monkeys in the Nazca Plains and all over the place. So another really common geometric motif is concentric ripples. So these seem to be really significant from a symbolic and ceremonial standpoint across a lot of cultures. And this is an astounding coincidence, I think, from two different cultures, one in Australia, one in Southern California, both known to have used drugs in these uh, ceremonies. So these ripple patterns also occur as decorations on artifacts from cultures where drug use was probably not involved. These patterns are drug-free hallucinations. In fact, you can all see these uh, in the middle of the night. If you really pay attention to what you see when your eyes are closed, looking in the dark, it's not dark. There's patterns in there, and you'll see some of these, these uh, figures. So other examples of drug-free hallucinations are jaggedy patterns that often accompany migraines, like these drawn by migraine sufferers. The lower right shows patterns around a blind spot, and the upper left images show stones placed over the dark entrance tunnels into the Irish, Irish passage tombs. So here's a set of figures from scientific reports drawn by people during or directly after they experienced hallucinations induced by drugs, migraines, or direct electrical stimulation of the brain, believe it or not, back when you could get away with that kind of stuff, scientific research. And they should look familiar, all of these geometric patterns. Here are the recorded hallucinations on the right compared to the set of symbols on the left that were extracted from the curbstones at that Irish site. These and every other geometric form that I've shown you so far can be found in some of these panels on the right. So the question is, what's the underlying source of this universality across all of these geometric motifs? Well, neuroscience research shows that these geometric forms emerge from the characteristics of the human brain that we all share and that we've shared all the way back to the time of our Paleolithic ancestors. Nerve cells from your eyes connect to the cortex in the back of your brain and form a distorted map of what you're seeing. We now know how to predict the pattern of nerve activity that would be generated in your visual cortex by any visual scene, and you can also predict the other way around. We can predict what hallucination you think you're seeing for any activity pattern that might be generated back in the cortex. So the real cool new thing is that we can predict the common set of activity patterns that would be generated back in the visual cortex by drugs, near-death experiences, migraine headaches, or just prolonged isolation in the dark. So one example is here on the bottom. Uh, 
the uh, induced brain activity is on the right, and then the perceived hallucination is over there on the left. So this prediction in the lower left is really similar to a real recorded hallucination in the lower right and with that 18,000-year-old artifact from Siberia that I showed before. So one hypothesis then is that the geometric forms that the shamanistic artists drew were simply accurate drawings of, of their visions. They were drawn what they were seeing. A common element across almost all of the predicted patterns is a light at the end of the tunnel effect. Uh, the upper left is... Uh, predicted pattern, and the images to the right are actual recorded LSD-induced hallucinations. And the lower right is one of the curbstones, and then the lower left is a drawing of a near-death vision by a survivor. So here's a whole set of hallucinations predicted by the computer model of the visual cortex. You might see the whole pattern or just small segments of any one of the patterns. So any of you old hippies out there that have seen any of these, just, just, <laughs> just shut it out. So uh, I expect. So look at the one on the upper right. If you cruise websites for near-death experiences, you find lots of drawings by survivors. And this one on the left really caught my eye because it's so detailed and so amazingly similar to one of the predicted hallucinations from the model. So it's well established now that oxygen deprivation is a real effective way of eliciting these visions and these cortical activity patterns. So how does all this generalize to artistic creativity that's independent of drugs and migraines? Well, it's possible that these geometric motifs sneak into the art of non-hallucinators just because these forms are natural motifs for our brain. So it's the, uh, the structure of the visual cortex, then, that really might explain some fundamental shared aspects of our artistic aesthetics. Thanks. <laughs>